Hello world and all who inhabit it, my name is Minish May. Today I'm going to be talking about MMOs. If you're a gamer and you've been on the internet, then you probably have played one of these growing up. Whether you started out with games like Club Penguin or Toontown, or you were more into the games like RuneScape or World of Warcraft, there was bound to be something for everyone. Then there were the games for the weebs. I'm talking about Maple Story, Gaia Online, El Sword, the whole shebang. Odds are you've played or at least heard of one of these. Having grown up with a bunch of these, MMOs were definitely one of the many ways I made friends in an online space, and some of my very good friends came from some of these games. However, there was one specific anime MMO that I found in middle school, and it completely grabbed me by the ankles and dragged me into weeb hell. Now, I want you to imagine this. A young Mei has just discovered Naruto, Clan Ad, Rosario Plus Vampire, Elf and Light, a bunch of anime that an 11-year-old probably shouldn't be watching. Mei decided to one day look up online anime games on Google. And one of the things that she finds is a colorful, old-style anime MMO with cute character designs, loads of customization, and it's free to play. So what do I do? Download it and play it religiously for the next three years. What is this crazy, addictive anime game that you ask, though? It's called Wonderland Online, and it's my personal favorite MMO. Wonderland Online was published by a Taiwanese gaming company called Chinese Gamer, which is a little confusing, but let's roll with it. Wonderland Online started back around 2005 in Taiwan, and was eventually published in North America in 2008, hosted by IGG. It ran for 11 years before its eventual closure in 2019. Though the North American version of Wonderland Online has come to a close, there's still a server that many have been playing on called Wonderland Online Rhode Island. Prior to this release, there had been a version called New Wonderland Online, but as of a few months ago, it shut down following the original. Which is unfortunately a bit sad, but at least it still lives on with Rhode Island. Even with the English servers down, there's a dedicated base of international players still playing the game. English guilds are abundant, and there's even English translations and patches available whenever there's updates. Despite the closure of the English versions of this game, players are still finding ways to keep their beloved childhood game alive. So, how would someone go about playing Wonderland Online nowadays, especially if they don't live in China or other Asian countries? I've linked some helpful videos below that'll show you how to go about downloading everything. I'd also recommend finding and linking up with English-speaking guilds, as they'll be able to help you more if you're thinking about joining. Follow the steps in the linked videos, and you should be golden! Everything will be in Chinese, but those translations that the guilds provide will be plenty helpful. I also will say that if you do plan on playing the game, people with Windows 11 may run into issues with how the game runs. Some people say it runs fine, and others say it's practically unplayable. So if you do run Windows 11 on your PC, just keep in mind that it could cause some issues. Some say it lags a little bit, some say it's playable, it really just depends on how your computer handles it. If you use Windows 10 or earlier, you shouldn't run into any problems. It's just an old game, so it's to be expected at this point. Anyhow, enough of history and technical talk, let's get into the game itself! WLO is like any other MMO. You choose a character, craft items, have player housing, fight monsters and level up, do all sorts of quests, and of course, you can make your character however you like. The story of WLO is a little bare bones, but the good thing about that is that the story quests are easy to follow while keeping one another in mind. And there are many side quests that don't pertain to the main story that you can do at your leisure. The game has you visiting many real-world locations from Europe, Africa, Asia, the Pacific Islands, and South America, meeting a variety of characters and all sorts of monsters on your journey. Now that you know a little more about the game, let's dive right in and start playing! When you first open the game and choose a server, you're prompted to design your character. You're given quite a few options to start out with, with a wide variety of preset characters at your disposal. Women, men, younger, chibi, in heavy quotations, characters. Whichever kind of character you'd like, they've got them. Once you've chosen your character, you then have to choose a name for them. This will be your username. 
Let's name our character something that hasn't been very relevant in my life in the past year. I'm obsessed. Help me. He looks perfect. You'll be able to do some stat distribution and choose your character's element here. If you're brand new, fires and waters are the easiest and some of the better elements to use. Even just choosing your stats at the beginning of the game can determine what job skill you choose later on in the game. But if this is your first time playing and you don't know what any of that means like I did, just go for it. Have fun with your first character. You can learn all about the nitty gritty with the later characters. After that, you can choose your skin, eye, and hair color. You can even choose to change the color of your underwear? Don't worry, this isn't the only weird thing in the game. It gets weirder. Once your character is created, you're thrown into the world of Wonderland Online. With so many menu bars, the chat box, and the interface, you may be a bit confused on where to go. The Chinese probably isn't helping if you can't read it. But throw those translations in and you should be good to go. The sea is the real hometown for men. No, I won't. It is desolate here, but free from noise and overcrowding. Moreover, Wilson accompanies me. Wilson, what's up? Why is this old uncle laying on the ground? Hey, you! How can you break into Fred's forbidden palace? You must be ready to die. <laughs> Listen, I know what you're thinking. It was like this in the original English version too. <laughs> the broken English just adds to the charm in my opinion. And listen, sometimes you just gotta go revive the monkey. It seems our little guy was on the cruise of a lifetime. He had waited 84 years for this opportunity, only for the cruise liner to collide with a rock, knocking him unconscious. That's okay though, I'm sure someone will help. Or not, <laughs> just leave me here to drown too, that's cool. After the shipwreck, we find ourselves being pulled ashore by a strange man. If you pay attention to the dialogue, you'll recognize it as a big old castaway reference. Pretty neat. With Robinson agreeing to tag along with us, he's our first instance of a pet. Pets are typically either creatures or humans, and they'll accompany you on your adventure. They can be used in battles, and some even go through fun story arcs. And yes, the fact that humans are called pets makes me uncomfortable too. After the quick tutorial, you take the raft Robinson gave you, and before you know it, you're on Starter Beach. Depending on what server you join, it could be a nice, peaceful little place, or it could be- oh, oh god, it's so crowded! So many tents, so many shops! Why is this so expensive? People pay real money for these things? Are you supposed to have this much gold? <sighs> but so long as you're not in server 1, you won't have to worry about getting lagged out. As you continue along, you'll meet more pets to join you, fight your way through monsters, and meet some of the locals. Take Roka and her father, the village chief for instance. Out of all the villagers here, they seem to be the most kind towards you. Roka even offers to help you with the quest her father gives you, and afterwards, she decides to travel with you. As you adventure, Roka will definitely become a powerful asset to your team if trained properly. While in this village, plenty of NPCs will give you quests that you can complete in or around the village. Some villagers will ask you to get honeycomb from their sick father, or gather ingredients for a soup, or even play a minigame to help rid a pig of some nightmares. All pretty basic stuff, honestly. All in all, this game seems pretty cute with little to no- Oh. Yeah, no, this game doesn't stray away from some darker themes either. Don't let the cutesy anime look fool you, this game is very much angsty. Though the broken English does make it funnier at times. Oh my god, I will not forget it! After the quest you do to help this little girl, it ends with her grandmother dying and you have to take Zhao Lan with you. She warns you that taking her will cause bad luck and she's destined to die. No need to worry, Xiao Lan. Come along with us. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing to- Ah. Uh, okay, cool. Death quests are a thing, so don't go getting too attached to the characters. There's also ways to bring some of them back, but if you play, you'll figure that out in due time. As you progress through the story, you'll meet all kinds of characters that will come to help you on your journey, providing support and help in fights, and if the right requirements are met, you can get cute little cutscenes between you and your human allies, watching as their stories unfold. Though WLO's overarching plot can be a bit difficult to follow, even though it barely exists, a lot of the characters that you meet are related to each other in some way, and you as the main character have a destiny that must be fulfilled. Take out the big bads, help your friends achieve their own destinies, and live a carefree life in the world of Wonderland Online. Well, that sucks considering our little guy just wants to go back home. Oh well, there's more important business to attend to.
Even on this small island, barely scratching the surface of the game, there's so much to see and explore. You can find collectible items if you look in nooks and crannies, there are pets and quests around every turn that'll help you on your own personal quest, and if you look hard enough, you can even find things that'll reward you for your hard work. Man, this cave was difficult to get through. Who knew worms and beetles could be so hard to fight? Ooh, there's light up ahead. Oh, it's a hot spring, nice! I wonder if that does anything special. Maybe I'll get a cutscene or... Hello? Let's just say, little me was playing as a girl when I first found this game. If you're playing as a girl, there are definitely some not very PG things showing. And this isn't the only instance of this happening. Plenty of your female pets get cutscenes that I can't show you on YouTube simply because YouTube would actually have a stroke. I swear, this game is borderline etchy content, and no one bats an eye to it. Including me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this game was my gay awakening, but, you know, it is what it is. Anyhow, hot springs are good in that they can restore HP and SP rather quickly by just sitting in them. If you let your character soak for 30 minutes in each hot spring, you'll gain a permanent boost to your HP and SP. There's 12 hot springs throughout the game, so that's a 120 total boost for both stats. Pretty nice if you're looking for an easy way to get a boost. However, there's one thing I need to complain about in Wonderland Online, and that's the level curve and the insane amounts of grinding that come along with it. Relatively speaking, the first island that you arrive at is generally pretty okay with its leveling curve. Everything in the first area is below level 20, and it doesn't take you very long to get to this level. It's only after you arrive at Holy Village on that same island that you realize, oh shit, this game is kind of tough. <laughs> you want to go save that furry guy that you just freed from a bear trap? Get ready to be slaughtered by strong NPCs. You found a well that leads to a cave system? <laughs> what a great time to find out that aliens exist, because they'll kick your ass. Oh, you want to help this guy take care of a big plant that's causing a ruckus? Shouldn't be too hard, Jesus Christ! And it only gets worse when you decide to leave North Island. The fun thing about Wonderland Online that I explained earlier is that you can visit anywhere in the world, giving you actual locations from the real world to visit. How you get there is totally up to you, though. You want to get there on a raft? Maybe a little bit difficult, but it's viable. Want to use a boat or a steamship? A bit more practical. There's ways to get spaceships and UFOs, airplanes, and other machines that can get the job done, but that requires crafting or buying from people, which is a whole other can of worms to unfold. Anyways, you figure the level curve can't get any worse, so you decide to go do some missions in... Korea? Sure. Oh, there's a waterfall? A secret passage? Don't mind if I do. I wonder where this leads. Why is it fucking level 135? Or let's say you meet a cute demon girl who you'd love to have join your team. Good luck with that because she's only level 124? The best way to counteract the crazy level jumps for quests and battles is by doing something that the game never explicitly tells you to do. In fact, the reason Little Maid never even made it past level 40 in this game was because I didn't know it existed and never even utilized it. This tactic will become a saving grace if you want to create a good team, and that's called bursting. I'm gonna skip all the technical mumbo jumbo and get right to the point. The best way to pull this off is to have one water and three fire type characters. The higher the attack on your fires, the better experience you'll get. You use your water to debuff the enemies using very specific actions along with pets specifically designed for this. Once the debuffs have been applied, the fires will up their attack and then go all in at once for a big combo. Once the battle ends, you'll gain massive experience from just that one battle. There's a way to do this AFK within the game, and after a few days, you'll have gone from level 30 to level 150 easily. It's the quickest and easiest way to make the most of the difficult level curve and the quests within the game. I think it still sucks a little that the game doesn't tell you that the best way to gain experience is through either having friends or having four characters and running four separate clients to even do this. Sure, you can level up the old-fashioned way, but even when you go to Training Island or you have experience potions, that's still nothing compared to what you'd get by bursting. It just... it doesn't feel right. Then again, I haven't played many MMOs, so maybe I just don't understand the grind. Even then, it shouldn't feel this grindy. You shouldn't have to do all this just to actually play the game. It's because of that that I never left the main island, and if I did, I got my ass kicked. I still adore Wonderland, I just wish it was a bit more beginner friendly. Because if you're not willing to pay someone to burst your character, which is a bit of a trust game since they pilot your account, 
or you don't have friends to help you, you're just stuck making individual characters and doing it yourself and hoping your computer can handle it. On top of that, if you want to do any of the late game quests, you need to have a good team. High attacking fires, high resistance waters, and high leveled pets. This game gets crazy with all the battle mechanics, and I don't even know the depth of most of these features myself. That being said, a lot of the players will argue that creating a team for quests is all part of the experience. So if that's your thing, don't let me tell you otherwise. This is just my own silly personal experience. If questing and battling aren't enough for you though, why not give crafting and selling a try? There's lots of places to collect items, and using your tent that you get at the beginning of the game, you can craft furniture, foods, syrups, and other things to sell to other players and make absolute bank. Or you could try decorating your tent too. You could use the free to play options, or you could deck your tent out with an item that lets you change the outside, or by getting furniture to decorate the inside. People have all sorts of fun ways of decorating their tent for aesthetic reasons, or for shop reasons. If you need inspiration, check out some of the people's tents that are laying around. There's also the IM shop where you can purchase in-game items using real money. These items can range from cosmetics, furniture packs, or things that will just generally increase the quality of life aspects of your game. Or, if all else fails, chilling in Kearney or in one of the towns is a nice way to relax with friends. It's all up to how you want to play, and having friends to show you the ropes or help you with quests makes it all the better. All in all, Wonderland Online is like any other MMO, but what drew me in was the cute art style and the anime look, and it was unlike anything I had ever seen before at the time. You kids nowadays may have your Genshin impact, but I'll take my 15-year-old borderline etchy anime game with cute girls and broken English. Genshin players, please don't come for my kneecaps, I'm kidding. And there you have it, my favorite obscure MMO that nobody knows about. If you played Wonderland Online when it was still around, what do you remember most about the game? Any fun memories you want to share? Let me know in the comments below. If you've been sad about IGG and Wonderland Online shutting down, definitely check out Rhode Island. It takes what we loved about the original Wonderland and they just keep adding more new things to it. If you want to see me ramble about more video games, be sure to subscribe. I do Let's Plays and video game playthroughs as well as speed paints from time to time. I also have a Discord where we talk about shenanigans and life, and we're always looking for newcomers to chat with. If you want to support me and my videos, feel free to check out my coffee. Any and all donations are welcome, and $5 or more will get you shoutouts in upcoming videos. But with all that being said, I'll see you guys around, and hopefully on Wonderland Online. And as always, stay kind to each other.